I'd like to ask Seamus to give his report. Thank you, President. Uh, thank you, Congress. Can I start off by just saying thank you much, very much to all of you for coming along here today and supporting the association. And also all the times that we go out to meet members in schools or in district meetings that you come along and you support us and encourage us to keep on going. I think that's, we underestimate that sometime how important and how valuable that support is. I'd also like to say uh, uh, a big thank you to all our uh, kindred spirit organisations that have joined us here today as well from different parts of the, the different jurisdictions uh, and also to all our guests that have come from the education establishments, uh, uh, institutions should I say rather than establishments and others that have joined us as well. I also would like to thank the members of the, the press who have been very helpful to us to get some of the stories out of what really is going on inside schools. Um, and sometimes people with the press does, do get a, a fair bit of criticism, but they do pick up on some of the things and, it, and they give us good, great, uh, bit great coverage. Uh, there's a, a, a fantastic piece on the BBC website, uh, which I've just been alerted to, shows me with, uh, I'm reported as uh, making some comments about the speech I'm about to make, which is great, <laughs> but uh, for some reason, I've got a big beard and a pair of glasses. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've also lost 20 years off my life as well. Yeah, so, so anyway, but uh, that, that's the, 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 the background there. So it's a big thank you to everybody to, to for supporting us to, uh, and carrying on our good work. Uh, we are approaching 75 years of the SSTA, and the issues in 1944 are the same as the issues of 2018, to protect the interests of secondary teachers in Scotland. Concerns over conditions of service, pay, and workload appear throughout our history, and will probably do so for a good number of years to come. The voice of the secondary school teacher must be heard above the demands for change or changes imposed will result in the famous phrase, which I hear quite a lot in, since I've been in Scotland, the unintended conse consequences. That will usually end in the changes having to be undone and with extra teacher workload as a, as a consequence. I'm going to focus on the first on the issues that SSTA members are demanding to be heard upon. The teacher shortage. The SSTA response is simple and direct. Teacher retention, recruitment and restoration. Retention. The first priority is to keep the teachers we have. It makes no sense not to value the experienced teachers we have. Any attempt to focus on recruitment misses the point. Our teachers, for the most part, have qualified in Scotland, gained experience here, and have maintained the education service despite years of unnecessary austerity cuts. The years of austerity measures have seen teacher numbers cut, promotion opportunities reduced, reduction in pay in real terms, increased workload, cuts in educational support staff, and have left the teacher in the classroom alone and unsupported to face the world. Why not take all measures pull out all the stops to encourage teachers to stay. This can be achieved by paying teachers properly, providing a real career structure, valuing teachers' professional judgment, find much needed teacher time by reducing workload and giving teachers real support with the appropriate educational professionals in meeting the challenges that the pupils bring with them into schools. The second issue is recruitment. We need to be able to encourage more people into the profession. In 2017, there were 1,750 secondary PGDE places, but best part of 30% 30, of them were left unfilled. Teaching is not attractive when we have low pay, spiralling workload demands, and when schools are unable to meet the needs of the more demanding and challenging pupils. Some say it is the teacher unions that are running down the profession. Unfortunately, that is an excuse to deflect the responsibility rather than address the issues that teachers try to bring to the table. Ignoring or not accepting the message of the SSTA is just storing up problems for the future. SSTA is not going to stop putting the views of its members to those who make the decisions and can help address the problems that teachers have identified. We need to encourage people to join the profession with offers of prof professional respect, professional levels of pay, 
career development and a manageable workload. Teachers should be, teaching should be seen as a career for life, not a job for a few years until something better comes along. Restoration. The numbers speaks for themselves. The top of the main grade, 0.6 in 2008, was 32,583. 10 years later, the top of the main scale is 36,480. This is an increase of 11.96% in 10 years. But the rate of inflation over the same period has been 26%, leaving a loss of more than 14% in teachers' pay over the last 10 years. However, that's not the full story, as teachers now pay an extra 1.4% national insurance and an extra 3.3% pension contributions. That makes a total of 18.7% deficit in terms of real take-home pay. To address this shortfall, the main grade teacher should be in the region of 43,000 in order to restore pay. And that will be our challenge in the next few years. The SSTA is a full member of the SNCT, and the 10% SNCT claim is our claim. This 10% claim cannot unreasonably uh, and is the first step in a restorative pay claim. The government needs to support and value its teachers by making a major effort to restore teacher pay levels. We heard about the teacher career pathways. Again, the figures are clear of the scale of the problem. In 2010, there were 24,776 secondary teachers, but by 2017, that had reduced to 23,150, a reduction of 1,626 teachers, a reduction of 7%. The number of deputy head teacher posts from, f fell from 1,242 to 1,108, a reduction of 134, a reduction of 9%. However, the number of principal teacher posts over the same period fell from 6,617 to 5,392, a reduction of 1,225, a reduction of 8%. Unfortunately, when you add the number of teachers that we've lost, and the number of PT posts we've lost, it means that 75% of those teachers that left took their posts of responsibilities with them. And that's where we've been facing the, the challenge. This is compounded when you add the, the end of the charter teacher scale, with no replacement and the devastating devaluing of supply teachers by cutting their pay. The employers and schools abused supply teachers for many years by breaking their service to keep them at the bottom of the scale. Is it any wonder they disappeared from the system? The delay in implementing a national supply register is continuing this unfair treatment of our supply teachers. Many of these changes were not sought for by teachers, but took place to save money and squeeze those teachers left in the system. Have the demands placed on schools reduced during this between 2010 and 2017? The answer is no. They have continued to increase. In this additional workload beyond the classroom, the demands of the national qualification system and the teacher accountability measures have also increased. The unintended consequence is that teaching became less attractive as a career and would eventually lead to a teacher shortage. This was completely predictable and avoidable. SSTA has advocated a progressive review of the teacher career pathways and looks forward to flexible and alternative routes for teachers throughout their careers. The SSTA expects proper recognition for all teaching roles in the education system, especially those in the classroom. The focus must be on teaching and learning. Teacher workload. Put pupils first, give teachers time to teach was our slogan last year. It's still there, we haven't gone away. We need to give teachers back control of their time. Teachers need to focus on teaching and learning and put to one side those duties and tasks that do not help the teacher in the classroom. We are making progress, but more needs to be done. We must ensure that the teacher contract is honoured and teacher workload is reasonably managed by strict control of the school's working time agreements. All school improvement plans, local authority improvement plans, the regional improvement plans and the government priorities need to be accommodated within the working time agreements. It is not hard for those creating priorities and the new initiatives to have their proposals to be considered by schools in the January of each year, before the school begins work on the working time agreements. 
It often appears that government, education in Scotland, local authorities, and sometimes head teachers in schools don't understand what a working time agreement is and the need to prioritise the plan, the work for the coming school year. A good case in point is the introduction of the subject benchmarks, standardised assessments, and the national five changes last year. They were all introduced after many school working time agreements had been agreed. Then the powers to be demanded that the training and hours of work needed were a priority and put pressure on teachers in schools to get the work done before the inspectorate arrived. This way of managing change needs to stop. Good planning and acceptance that everything cannot be delivered at once is the only way forward. Teachers are tired of being pressurised and overloaded. Teachers need to say no more often. National qualifications. Deputy First Minister said in relation to the changes to National 5, this is what he said at the time, this will help to reduce unnecessary workload for teachers and learners. It is not enough to have good teachers if they do not have the time and space to do their job. That is why groups like this, this are essential to help us strip away anything that creates unnecessary workload for the profession. Teachers were told to expect changes to assessment arrangements, but what we got was changes to course content. Last year, the SSTA, SSTA survey on national fine changes predicted the increased workload across all subjects of the proposed changes. In the last week, SSTA and our members, you, conducted a survey at the end of the National Five course on the impact of these changes. In just over a week, we've had 1,236 responses across all the subjects. The overall impact, and I'm going to mention a couple of details now, a full report of this is going to come out in the next week or two, broken down by every subject as well, but this is just a few of the highlights of it. The overall impact on teacher workload, 21% said there'd been no reduction in their workload as removal of the units and the changes to the National, uh, National Five, with 66% of teachers seeing an increase in their workload. When we looked at the removal of the units, 34% of teachers had said there was no reduction in workload, and with a 30 further 34% seeing an increase in workload. When we got to certain subjects, certain things appeared. Last year, we were aware that there was big problems with biology and, uh, and computer studies. Biology, they saw an increase as, re as a re result of the removal of the units of 58% workload increase. When it came to extending of the exams, 30% of our members saw no reduction in workload, whilst the further 52% saw an increase. That's the average. But when we got to computing, the increase was 74%. And surprisingly, history was 77%. The changes of to coursework, 24% saw no reduction, 49% saw an increase in teacher workload. When it came to computing, there was a 70% increase in workload, and biology, 80%. So we are getting what we said was going to happen and wasn't listened to this time last year. We predicted that workload was going to get out of control. But, however, the impact on pupils of the changes to National Five is very worrying, especially when there has been a lot of talk about pupils' health and well-being and mental health. Members have seen a 57% increase in pupil workload as a consequence of the changes. In computing, it went up as high as 74%. In history, 84%. When it became pupil stress, the average was 68%. But when we looked a bit closer, maths, 63%. Computing, 81% increase in stress. And history, 95% increase in stress. When it came to, did this make a, uh, any difference in terms of the youngsters' uh, qualifi qualification success? We got, in maths, it believed the changes made it 35% more difficult for the youngsters to achieve what they should be achieving. Computing, 44%, and again, history, 47%. That just gives you a flavour of what our members are saying. And we haven't, got, we haven't had the opportunity to examine all the figures yet, but I do say, this is what very, very worrying indeed, and we need to ask the question, why are we doing this to our children? The minister's expectation that the removal of units would reduce teacher workload, 
This has been undermined with the agreed uh, to the retention of fallback. It's worth noting that 90,000 90, unit entries took place in National 5. Fallback had been intended to be the exception, not the rule. This crudely equates to 30,000 students completing three units per subject, and that would mean there were 70 plus pupils in every secondary school were exceptional circumstances. Again, SSTA predicted that teacher workload would not be reduced and it would be put additional pressure on teachers and pupils. We are creating an examination factory, not places of learning where happiness is seen as a good and valued thing. The national qualification system needs to be reviewed. The present system is not working for our pupils. The conflict between the broad general education and the senior phase needs to be resolved. National qualifications have become Never mind the quality, feel the width. The situation of National 4 must be addressed urgently and the premise that it's a stepping stone to National 5 is not there when less than 20% or just over 20% of pupils are progressing to National 5. We need a system that primarily focuses on teacher professional judgment without the workload heavy bureaucratic and administrative nonsense we have now. We did also back in March a survey related to teaching and incidents of violence. Uh, again, 1,079 responses in a few days. And, we've, it, and all it did was confirm the regular reports we have and we've receiving at headquarters from members on the increasing problem of poor behaviour in schools. In our survey, 70% of members experienced incidents of serious verbal abuse. 60% had experienced incidents of threatening or menacing behaviour. And 19% experienced incidents of physical assault. Head teachers and, and teachers feel unsupported in trying to maintain good discipline in schools. The constant statistics drive to reduce permanent and temporary exclusion is putting tremendous pressure on schools and teachers. Exclusion has become to be seen as a teacher and school failing, when in reality it's showing that schools following years of staffing and funding cuts are, are unable to meet the needs of the pupils in their schools. These pupils become frustrated and disillusioned and hit back at the teachers and the remaining few education support staff we have in schools. In our survey, 28% of teachers said they were not familiar with the reporting of incident and violent procedure in their schools or their authority. And when asked, did you report it? Only 55% of those who suffered serious verbal abuse did report it. 66% reported uh, incidents of menacing, uh, threatening or menacing behavior, and 71% reported physical assault. But the most telling statistic only 33% said they felt supported or received feedback after the incident. The difficulties in reporting incidents and perceived lack of no action being taken undermines teachers and fails to address the needs and the worsening conditions in school. The high number of teachers who feel that schools try to sweep it under the carpet and not address the issue is alarming. Schools and local authorities who put their heads in the sand and fail to address the issue, just storing up problems in the future. It's far better to address the behaviour at the earliest stage before it gets out of hand. It's no wonder that teachers are leaving our schools when levels of poor behaviour and lack of support is a regular occurrence in schools. All violent incidents of, must be reported and any bureaucratic or duplicate processes need to be removed. It's not unreasonable for teachers to expect action to be taken by their employers and the schools to reduce their incidents and protect staff. But overall, teachers need to be believed and supported when these incidents occurred. The education bill, we don't know what it's going to be like. It's coming forward, uh, usually just before the summer holidays, just when everybody's going away. Take it as a given that SSTA members care about education and getting the best for their pupils. The main areas of concern for SSTA members are very straightforward, pay, workload and pupil behaviour. The education bill is intended to create a school and teacher-led education system, but when government legis legislates, it must be built on public consensus. In this case, the changes intended are not welcomed by the majority of the public, and in some instances, they're already happening. The creation of the regional improvement collaboratives is already happening without legislation. Improving parental and community engagement and strengthening the voice of the child and young people is a place schools would like to be, 
but lack the funding to provide staff and time that is needed for this to be delivered. Provide the resource and it will happen. No need for legislation. The creation of the Head Teachers Charter is unwanted by many head teachers as they are already struggling to cope with all the demands placed upon them. There is no public consensus for, so, for this, so Minister, please don't proceed. The last plank of the legislation is the Education Workforce Council. Teachers don't need it and other education workers are not demanding it. To introduce it would be an imposition and it's not what the public wants. The priority must be to make changes that are going to help the teacher in the classroom today. If the proposed education bill is not going to help teachers in the classroom today, then don't do it. It does not address the issues that are important to teachers, pay, workload and pupil behaviour. The teacher's voice, I mentioned it very quickly this morning. Over the last year, the teacher voice has been marginalised, in particular the voice of the secondary school teacher. The minister has rearranged those who he, who he talks to and listens to. It is easy to surround yourself with people that say the things that you want to hear. It is much harder to listen to those who will challenge you and are prepared to question your direction of travel. SSTA has represented its members by putting the views of its members to all levels within the education system. Unfortunately, some of the home truths are not too easy to take. The SSTA is not walking away, but wants to work with all parties to address teacher issues and find solutions. For the sake of our children and for our very good education system, the minister needs to listen to secondary school teachers and he needs to listen to the SSTA. Thank you very much.